I've never really done, I've shown this car being unloaded and loaded when I acquired it, but I've never really shown the car close up. And this is a 78 Chrysler New Yorker. And it only has like 28,000 original miles on the car. And it really is original 28,000 miles. See, I went to go to the door handle here, and, and there is no door handle. And that's that's part of the problem, is that um, the car got into the hands, the wrong person's hands. Terrible paint job. He shaved off, you know, side marker lights, body chrome trim wheel rings, New Yorker emblems. If it had body side molding, I think it did, that's gone. Um, try to put a stereo system into the car. Um, automatic door locks, or I guess remote control doors for the rear seats. Um, car really was in beautiful condition. I can only imagine what this car was like when he first got his hands on it. Um, so I thought I'd try to use the car the way it was and find a different engine for my Royal Monaco wagon. But I found a beautiful 1978 Chrysler New Yorker. It's a dark green with a green leather interior and about 40,000 miles on it. And it's been in a front end collision. It's header panel, it's bumpers, it's hood is damaged and it's front fender and it's door. So I'm gonna start taking this car apart. The engine is gonna go into the Royal Monaco. The body parts are gonna be used on the other New Yorker. And I'm going to make two really nice cars out of one, I'm sorry, out of three, three cars. And sadly, this car is gonna give up its life. Um, it's um, really in rough shape. You can see all the rust here. Well, actually, you can't really see it. It's it's pretty bad. Um, dented trunk. Here we'll go inside. It's the inside of the trunk. Everything is right out of the way. So, today is the day it starts to get disassembled. So, four flat tires. I didn't even think about this hood. I'm going to have to tie that down. But beautiful interior. It's got a dent in the roof I'm going to have to take care of. I see a little spot here. It's all has a little bit of softness in the rockers, but nowhere as near as bad as the other car. This uh, definitely has a 1978 tail lights. Look at the snake. Crawford's Auto Sale in Caribou, Maine. And this is the original, it's a one owner car. But uh, the funny thing is the side mirrors don't have the sticker, the green colored, uh, colored keyed uh, mirror. Here we go. With air in the tires, so it sits actually pretty nice. Front fender is damaged as well. I did not know that hood's a mess, but I've got that. Put the air in the tires now so we can get around the trailer. It's gonna be pushing the weight limit on the trailer though, that's for sure. Okay, we're on um, day th three of owning the New Yorker. Um, picked it up from Caribou, Maine and brought it on down to Augusta. And yesterday I spent the day cleaning it. And basically what I mean, 
cleaning it. I mean getting the mouth's, mouth urine smell out of it. Um, but now I think I can, people can see clearly now what I'm going to be doing here because um, we can see the front end collision that this car had. And it was a good whack. And it, when I walk here, I can smell urine. So I'm sure there's mouse house in the engine compartment, but I haven't had a chance to get to that yet. Um, I found them living in uh, the glove box and uh, they had really ingenious, oh, I can close it now because I cleaned it out. They had uh, here in this corner, they had built a house. But uh, overall, you can see um, the car has some cobwebs in the back I got to get to, and it's got this headliner sagging. But uh, overall, you know, it's uh, really, really, really supple. Not hard at all. It's really like this has not been out in the sun. You can see it's not faded. Um, car was repainted on this side you can see the paint repaint job goes up to there and then that's original paint there and then everything back here has been repainted and I think you can see the difference in color to there to there and they blended it in there and of course it you can see they pulled the vinyl roof back I think and painted underneath it and then they re-glued it down but it's the only spot that needs some touch-up work but uh, oh, I'll give you a little tutorial so the 74 and 75 Imperial LeBaron used this front clip and this rear end and a lot of people don't realize that this is not the same as the Chrysler New Yorker in 74 75 New Yorker had different tail light housings different rear bumper and a different trunk lid this kind of bulge here uh, was for the Imperial and the body line that doesn't exist on the Chrysler New Yorker or the Newport the Newport had its own rear end styling too it was sort of like the way the DeSoto was um, same body as a Chrysler but some different panels. Um, so in 1976, this became the Chrysler New Yorker. The Newport moved up and took the New Yorker's old body and the old Newport styling went away. Um, little things is like in 78 model year, this, this um, insert, which is not like General Motors. They really, they did them well. Um, it's made out of a urethane, but no ribs. It's a nice clean line where previously um, they, there were ribs, ribs in it. So the other styling change on 78, which is weird that they would do it in the last year, is that the Imperial in the previous New Yorkers had a halo roof. So this chrome would go up and then across this way, and this would be body colored. Uh, and that really caused rush is rust issues because the mountings would rust and the roof would start to rust. So that actually was a quality improvement, although style-wise it looked better the other way. Here is the other New Yorker that I have. Now this but is it was left outside in the wintertime in New England, and you just don't do that to an antique car that had been garaged its whole life. Um, another styling change on 78. They actually changed these lenses. It's a one-year-only lens. Hit by a snow plow. Rust is awful. Really bad. So, just because of that rust alone, um, I'm going to use the engine out of this. For uh, And it's a 440. That has a 400. That has a 440. So, this will be used in the... Um, Dodge Royal Monaco wagon that I have. So I've removed uh, a lot of the parts. I'm going to take that seat out, steering column out as well. See if I can sell some of the stuff to recoup some of the costs. While we're out here though, I thought I, I'm going to show you a car I've never shown you folks before. This is my uh, my Imperial. 
This is a 1962, very dusty Imperial Crown convertible. And uh, I've had it about 20 years. I put a 1961 style deck lid on the back. I want to get 1963 bumpers because they've got a, a more modern futuristic bumper with uh, sort of like jet pods for the backup lights. So I think the jet pod and the um, bomb site taillights with the toilet seat would really make this car look uh, much cooler than it already does. One of the things uh, it has is this is the uh, boot, the original boot for the convertible top. And you, you never see that in old antique cars. They always get lost, thrown away. People move or sell a car and it doesn't go with the car. Um, original leather interior, power windows. This car has every single possible option you can have on the car with the exception of air conditioning. Um, according to the build sheet, really nice steering wheel and dashboard. Dash pad is in beautiful shape. High beam, Twilight Sentinel. Um, again, original front seat, all original leather. And this is a pearlescent, so there's almost like a glow to it. Uh, that I re put in, and same with this because it was a little dried out. So, um, I started her up last month. I had her running. Um, I wanted to get to her today and get air in the tire. The tire always loses air. Um, but uh, very big car, so it's kind of fitting that the two are going to be parked next to each other. So anyways, that's, that's the Imperial Convertible. I think I have a few videos. Um, I hope you guys have been in, uh, enjoying the commercials I've been uploading. Uh, there's more on the way. And... Uh, I've got some things I wanted to talk about today or show you today and first off I just wanted to say that I'm going to be trying to do commercials, more commercials, but um, on a scheduled basis uh, in advance so that they're premiered and you see them every couple of days but only one a day. Uh, I, I think a lot of times in the past what I've done is I've uploaded a ton of stuff all at once over a two or three day period and then go silent for six months. So what I'm trying to do is uh, have commercials on a more scheduled basis. So first I want to thank everybody that's um, been watching my channel. Uh, I'm actually been doing this as a hobby and I'm trying to take it a little bit more seriously now. And uh, you know, I've never said this before, but uh, if you folks all wanted to subscribe, that would be really appreciated. I've, I'm approaching 16,000 subscribers, which isn't really a whole lot. But I've never asked anybody to subscribe, so that's kind of the cool thing about this is that people have just gravitated to my channel over the last 15 years by accident. I think a lot of it is just people just have seen it and they like what they've seen and they've subscribed. 